What's up everyone? Welcome to one hour of destroying Grandmasters with Battlecruiser. Since in the last episode I did Hydralis and Dark Templars, I thought it was time for a Terran unit. A lot of you guys suggested Ravens and Widow Mines. Those are units I'm definitely gonna do. But I think especially for Ravens, I'll actually have to sit down for a minute and think about cool strategies. Battlecruisers, I am ready to go. Let's begin. Alright, first game of the day is against a 5000 MMR Zerg. That's gonna be in the lower Grandmaster range. I think... <clears throat> it's a little bit hard to say because the season hasn't been uh well it didn't start that long ago i should say which means that not all the high mmr players are yet promoted to grandmaster so right now 5.4k is probably around rank 100 grandmaster but realistically as the season progresses 5.4 is gonna be about rank 150 i think or so now just to remind you guys of the rules this is not gonna be a super strict crazy challenge where I can literally only make battle cruisers. I have to make battle cruisers and ideally I make a lot of them, but I am allowed to make other stuff. So throughout this hour, I'm going to be trying to think what different strategies I can do and execute to really make the battle cruiser look strong. Now I had one cool idea already, which was to go for, I think I used to do like a single Hellion drop with a proxy starport and then make a battle cruiser from it. I have to admit, it was one of those crazy, you know, marky thermal projects where I used it a lot and realistically it wasn't that great, but I kind of fell in love with the idea of the build, so I kept executing it, even though I definitely got my fair share of losses with that one. Now, a build I definitely have to put in this video is going to be the Command Center first double battle cruiser rush, super, super strong against Zerg, uh, especially just one time in a series, you know, if you're ever going to play a tournament and you're playing against it doesn't even have to be like a grandmaster it could be like your freaking arch nemesis in in silver 2 or whatever you know it doesn't matter but if you play against the zerg you know you have like a couple games against him you should definitely learn the freaking command center first double battle cruiser rush like it is it is very painful it is tough to deal with if they don't know the exact counter if they don't know how to scout for it if they don't line counter you on accident which is very unlikely because i don't think any yeah, actually, I don't think there's a single meta build that really counters it blindly. The only thing is that you can you can probably die first. <laughs> so if you're playing against someone that's going to cheese you, you might have to be a little more careful in selecting the map where you're going to do it on. But yeah, you could definitely die first. I'm just going to go for my one Reaper. Um, what do I want to do this game? Oh, that's actually a pretty fast set of Zerglings, huh? Wait, this looks a little weird, because if you're going to send Zerglings out that early... Wait, didn't I send... I thought I sent an SCP already. If you're going to send out Zerglings that early, they should usually be dodging the Reaper. Or the SCV scout, rather. Uh, I do think I want to scout the main. It's it's a little risky, but I do think I want to scout the main here, because this could be like a Roach in follow-up. And I'm going to go for a cruiser, so... I want to at least make the minimum units I need to survive, right? Let's see. That is way too much gas mine. Yeah, we are going to get all in pretty hard here, guys. That is not going to be super complicated to read. I kind of hope that we're going to go up against Bailings and not Roaches, because I didn't really know how I would defend Roaches here. I guess I suppose... Uh, I guess I suppose. I suppose I could go for Cyclones from this one factory. Um... Yeah, I don't know. Cyclones against Ling Bane. Like, the thing is, if you're going to go for an early baiting on him, like what he's most likely doing, you're not really going to have that many units. Like, it's not going to be, uh, you know, 25 bailings rolling in. It's most likely going to be, like, somewhere between 6 and 10 bailings, and then a Link Flood to follow it up. I do like the idea... Yeah, I'm going to do that. I do like the idea of uh, making a bunker over here. And now I guess we're going to see how well the Cyclone is going to do. Now, I mean, my follow-up to this is still going to be Battle Cruisers, and here... It's, it's a little crazy because it's on the greedy side, right? But I do feel like it's a good follow-up once you survive. The, the problem is that I'm already planning to do it now, right? Because I am I want to hold this all in and then go for the battle cruisers. But if you survive a cheese decently and you can go for like even a two star per battle cruiser follow-up, they are not going to have enough queens to defend. They are not going to have a lair. Like it really is a pretty good choice here. Now, I haven't seen anything attack me yet. I mean, I'm still going to continue with the defenses. I think I'm just going to switch it in uh, to the double star per battle cruisers that I've been talking about. I wasn't planning on doing that i thought i was just gonna go for some kind of attack with battle cruisers like maybe like hellbats or something hellbat cycle with battle cruiser whatever i could invent on the spot uh, but since i've been kind of pushed into a weird opening and i'm pretty sure my opponent is still cheesing me by the way like you could think i'm getting faked but you there's no reason that you mine that much gas uh, so i still think there's something weird going on now he is gonna scout my double bat oh, okay this is gonna be a this is a very weird game 
So he has Link Speed, Overlord Speed. Uh, he still has gas left over, because even when I checked, he had mined about 250 gas. Now, he could totally be transitioning now. Uh, th this is an incredibly weird game, because I'm stuck here going for a double port battlecruiser, and it is scouted. But my opponent, despite scouting it, he has a really bad economy because of the freaking build he did. So I don't even know. I'm, I'm very tempted to go across with these Cyclones. This is a freaking crazy idea. The thing that baited me to do this was the Overlord speed. If this guy baited me successfully by going Overlord speed while still all inning for absolutely no reason, then we just we just have to be honest and give him a shout out, right? Because that's freaking genius. Like, this is just the biggest bait ever. That'd be great. If he kills these cycles, I'm not going to care about it that much. This is more of um, kind of trying to get him to overreact kind of thing. Because battle cruisers, you know, they need a very strict response, which is either... Two spores and a lot of queens taking extra bases or going for corruptors right away. Let's see, what do we have over? Yeah, he doesn't have that many units, you know. If I can get even one queen here, guys, that'd be freaking massive. Like, even one queen would be great. Like, it's really not that many zerglings. Let's see, can I get the one queen? I think I am going to get the one queen. Yeah, exactly. Okay, that's beautiful. And he made more zerglings. Even more zerglings. Exactly. Okay, this was a massive success here, guys. Let's go. That's beautiful. Now, we're still in a weird situation, though. Don't get me wrong, because he... I'm kind of afraid the Corruptors are out already. Or not out already, but they're, you know, the Spire is done. Let's put it that way. The Corruptors are probably going to start building or they're already building. I'm going to wait for another Battle Cruiser. Probably sacrifice at least one or salvage one of those bunkers. Uh, I want to wait for the... Yeah, okay. My scan is going to come online perfectly on time. So there's no lair over here. If there's no lair over here, that would be freaking weird. Oh, yeah, okay, exactly. I was going to say, if there's no lair, that would be absolutely absurd. So now, I just need to hope that he doesn't have that many Corruptors. We're going to get a decent amount of damage done. Uh, but I do have to be really careful for the Corruptors. I think it would be way smarter if I just fly back already, to be honest. Because if there's going to be, like, 10 Corruptors or... I don't think I don't even think you need 10. Like let's say eight corruptors, it's probably already gonna be too many. And my economy doesn't look so bad compared to his, to be fair. Like I know it sounds crazy to say with how late my third CC is, but my opponent has zero drones over here, right? Like keep that in mind. There were absolutely no drones there. Behind this, maybe I'll just go for cyclones or something. I'm not even sure what the good follow-up here would be. I think cyclones make sense because they shoot air. Right? The my opponent is going to try to counter me with Corruptors. Might even go into Mutas as well, by the way. But that would be pretty unconventional, to say the least. Let's try to take this base now. Um, do I need anything else to defend? Yeah, the big problem with Cyclones is that you want to kite with them. That's a lot of Corruptors. I I'm actually pretty surprised he didn't chase me, right? Isn't it a little weird? Like, he, he didn't even try to go for the Battle Cruisers? Like, we saw the Spire was finished. The Corruptors can't have finished that much later, so... Pretty surprised that they didn't even try to get on top of these BC. I'm going to kill a couple more links, which is nice. I'm, go I'm going to keep making battle cruisers this entire game, by the way. Like, this is the plan. I'm going to play mass BC. And the goal is to get into one of those really campy games with ghosts and just fly battle cruisers nonstop, snipe corruptors all the time. I think that's going to be a nice play. I'm not, I'm not really a fan of the cyclones behind it, but currently I don't really have the resources to do anything else, to be honest. Now, should I go for... Yeah, I, I guess normally you wouldn't go for air upgrades, but if you're going to, you know, commit to making mass BCs anyway, you should probably get air upgrades because air upgrades are really, really important. General rule for StarCraft, of course, if your unit shoots fast, then you need attack upgrades because every single one of those attacks is going to deal uh, extra damage, right? Now, I, I'm pretty sure I saw roaches. I'm not 100% sure, but I think I did see roaches. Let's see. If he doesn't target properly, I can save. There we go. Oh, nice. He backed off just a little bit, and that's going to save that battle cruiser. I wasn't sure. It was going to be close whether I would be able to save it or not, but there you go. That's how you can use battle cruisers for infinite value, guys. Like, quite literally infinite value here. Just get Yamatos. Teleport back. If there's too many Corruptors, you will lose one BC. But even trading one BC for four Corruptors or even five or six, depending on how many BCs you have, is going to be worth it. Now, you are going to have to be very careful. If you guys watched my uh, one Zerg Grandmaster versus, was it, four Silver Players game, I believe, you will know what Infestors can do against Battle Cruisers, okay? Like, Infestors are so good against them. It's crazy. It, it feels like he's attacking me, right? He's just rallying units across nonstop. I'm... 
I might be crazy, but I really feel like I saw roaches. Oh, no. I, okay, I wasn't crazy. Thank goodness. Oh, he has a corpus here already. Let me back off. What does that army look like? You know what, guys? Normally, that is not the limiting factor for these kind of attacks, but I don't think he has enough corruptors. You don't usually need a lot of corruptors. Oh, no, that is not the right button. I guess it's a nice surround. <laughs> that looks very weird. Let me get the Yamatas. It's really nice for me that he's fighting in the turrets, by the way. And somehow... That uh, Blinken didn't cost me, you know, the game. That really should have been a disaster, but it wasn't that bad. Now, I still need to clean this up in time. The good thing for me uh, is that I have this one turret over here still. And I have a lot of SCVs. Like, these SCVs are going to make it so that it doesn't really matter if I lose a lot. I have a couple more Yamatos over here. I'm going to try to pull the low HP Battlecruisers back. If I don't lose any, that's going to be crazy value. Now, I did... Oh, I can repair this one real quick. I did... Oh, losing the command center is a bad mistake. I was so focused on saving that Battlecruiser that that is going to cost me a decent amount. Now, I have a lot of SCVs, but they're pretty much all gone already. Let's see. I have 50 SCVs left. My opponent was pretty all in. You know what, guys? I think the play here is to just freaking go for it. Like, I'm going to teleport on top of the Spire, take down the Spire instantly, and that is the one thing I can do to win this game still. Probably do a Yamato on that one. There we go. And now the Spire has fallen. Wait, he didn't have spores. Oh, no, he does have one spore on the on the left side. I guess he... Okay, they're just not covering the mineral line for some reason. He, he does have two spores there, but they're not really covering anything, which is kind of funny. Okay, let's see if this battlecruiser can do anything. Where's the corruptors? He's going to try to find that one battlecruiser. I mean, I can just teleport on top of these. This is a weird situation because normally I teleport out, but now I'm teleporting in because I, I need to do as much damage, you know, as possible without uh, losing these battlecruisers, I guess. Like, I can't really transition from this. I do have 1-1, one, one, by the way, which is freaking massive. Like, the 1-1 one, one is actually going to help me a lot. I'm just going to be spamming command centers out here. Can I move this one back a little? If he has to fly into the battlecruiser flock, it's going to be decent trades keep in mind because of the one one he does have one upgrade as well but it's not going to be quite as important now definitely ending up with a banger on the first game of the day here i mean that's kind of what i've expected playing mass bc against zerk to be fair uh, should i just i think i should probably just target the hatcheries and i think maybe i should be making cyclones on the follow-up here instead of more bcs uh, and i say that because i feel like this amount of bcs is enough right like as soon as my opponent's new Spire finishes, he is going to be able to make enough Corruptors to kill these. So, I don't know. Is it really worth it to go for more BCs at this point? I kind of want to teleport back, but uh, I can't. I don't have teleport on all of these, unfortunately. Let's see. I don't have... Do I have teleport on all of them now? No, one of them doesn't yet. Yeah, I think we're going to go for... Uh, oh, there is the Spire. Okay, so the Spire is finished now. I think I'm going to go for the Cyclones as the follow-up here. I do like that idea. Let's see if I can kill a couple more drones here. Would be nice trying to micro along the edges let's see i do have a good amount of command centers you know like i know it looks weird but i do have a good amount of command centers does he have that one uh he might have that base over there i'm not 100 percent sure if i can take down this base that already be pretty massive for me uh sh wait am i guys am i turning this into a five command center setup I mean, I, you know, I know this is not one of those challenges where I would typically end up with a five command center setup, but it does seem like we are going to have, like, the freaking triple planetary just balling out here. There we go. Uh, yeah, it is triple. For a second, I thought I already had a planetary, but that one obviously died. Let's see. Is he moving across? He's not moving across. I have 63 SCVs already. Look how slow the money is going up, by the way, because I'm repairing a battle cruiser. It's, yeah, it's, it's, it's not the cheapest thing ever if you do it with that many workers. Now, I suppose I should go for... 2-2 two, two on the BCs as well. Feels, feels a little weird to make 2-2 two, two right now with the limited money I have, but do I really want more battlecruisers? I'm not sure. I think at this point, by the way, the opponent must be a little discouraged. From his POV, I think he expected me to have less than that. I don't think he's very happy to see a fully saturated third base with a planetary, seven battlecruisers, and cyclones. I, I don't think he was really, uh, you know, expecting to see those things. So my next goal is to try and deny this base. Uh, if he doesn't have that base, then, I mean, then we're fantastic anyway. If he does have it, then I'm going to try to snipe it ASAP. It doesn't look like it because there's no creep, right? Yeah, he doesn't have that base. Okay, so somehow we ended up being, you know, pretty far ahead after all that. Oh, wait, oh, this is going to be such a good bait. Here, I'm going to sacrifice these cycles. Let's see, is it going to be F2? No F2, but he's not paying attention. I'm going to Yamato that lair super hard and just take it down. Oh, this is beautiful. There we go. The lair is going to fall. And I do have to teleport the hell out of here because that's a lot of corruptors. But I'm going to save all of these. I killed this base as well. And this has ended up being a freaking brutal game for the opponent here. I'm just going to repair these BCs. And there we go. 
Now that is a freaking warm-up game, all right, guys. 11k resources lost against 18k. How many workers did I kill? Very civil game for a mass battlecruiser harass kind of game, but here you go. I mean, you know, I recommended you guys to learn this build early. This game might... Well, either you guys are really into this build now or absolutely not, because this looks pretty tough, right? Like, I had to defend. It was a really hard defense. A surprisingly hard defense, I have to say, considering how many units I had. But we made it happen. Fantastic warm-up game. Let's keep it going. All right, game number two is against another Zerg player, but five, four, five hundred MMR higher this time. Now, one thing I didn't even think about before starting this recording, by the way, is that I have been quite excited about doing Battlecruisers against Terran because of the new Cyclone. Because Terrans always used to open with Cyclone Raven, um, and that just shut down pretty much all harassment, including Battlecruisers. Because you could use Interference Matrix on the Battlecruiser. Cyclone does enough damage to, I think, deal like 300 damage to it in the span of that Interference Matrix. So you can imagine that it was just not, it was not that great. But the new Cyclone, I can't imagine that it's that great against the new BC. Like, it just doesn't really do enough damage to take it down fast. You have to research Interference Matrix as well. So I guess there's a, you know, a very real possibility that BC openers are now just going to be insane against Terran. I mean, okay, maybe not insane, but just better, right? Because if they were insane, we probably would have seen pro players spam them all the time. Or maybe there was a phase where they did that and I kind of missed it. And then, you know, they figured out how to counter it already but i i don't think so i feel like i would have seen it or i would have heard about it or something um so i guess we're gonna give that a try later if we do get a terror but like in the in the last episode there was also one ray yeah we didn't play a single pvp for example so it's uh you know it's a very real possibility we don't get a single terror in here we're just gonna be playing zergs i do have to say i'm getting more zergs on the ladder than before um which is kind of a nice development i mean it's not necessarily that I prefer playing against Zerg over the other races, but realistically, for most part of my, you know, Grandmaster career, you play against Protoss players 60% of the time, so it's quite nice uh, to get a decent amount of Zergs and Terrans as well. I did make a comment before, I think it's already a while ago, but I did make a comment before that it, it actually seems like you play different races based on the time of the day you queue. I feel like you get the most Terrans when you queue late at night, uh, you get the most Zergs when you play early on in the day. Hey, that's a cool spray right there. Um, and you get Protoss players whenever you queue at any time of the day that's not particularly late or particularly early. At least that's what it seems like for Grandmaster. So I feel like you could... Imagine if you were like an insane TVZ player, right? Like you're only good at TVZ and you suck at everything else. You could probably boost your MMR by just queuing at like the Zerg times, you know? Like that's actually... I mean, I don't think anyone really does that because people want to play the game when... Even pro players, right? They want to play the game when it's like most convenient for them. But it would be pretty funny. Like, if you want to boost your MMR, you could do a little bit of an experiment where you just queue at the times where you get the most, you know, opponents of the race you are the best against. That would be a pretty fun experiment. Now, this game, I went for the Command Center first build, uh, which means I'm going to be doing, hopefully, a more proper version of the Double Starport Battlecruiser Rush. I, I don't necessarily want to only play Double Starport Battlecruiser against Zerg, uh, but since the last game was kind of like a... A very scuffed, you know, reactive version instead of... Wait, I should check the gold base here, actually. Uh, instead of really going for it straight up, I think it, it would be pretty cool to see how I can make it work now. Um, I guess I'll make a... I don't want to make too many Hellions because they cost a lot of money and I also want to start gases, but I think without Hellions I can't survive. Now, if my opponent has no third base, that's going to be a different scenario entirely. I don't think I should... Yeah, okay, there we go. Third base is there. Uh, that is nice to see. It's a pretty... Yeah, reasonably timed third base as well. I wonder if it would be a good move to go for two Cyclones. I mean, it's 100 gas. 100 gas that I don't necessarily want to be spending on them. But they will give me incredible, you know, scout denial. Uh, and that might be exactly what I want. Let's see, this Reaper is going to... Oh, that's actually relatively early speed. Earlier than you would normally have it. So that's interesting. Um, I guess I'll... Yeah, I'll just make the second starboard right away. I don't think... Waiting for the two Cyclones to, you know, deny a potential Overlord is going to be worth it. Well, I guess I guess maybe it is, to be fair. It doesn't look like we're going to be scouted, though, so that's nice. I mean, the last Zerg player played, like, freaking mining 300 gas and make Overlord speed build. So, who knows what Zerg players do to scout these days. Guess I'll make two more Hellions, and that's going to be it. Like, I know Battlecruisers, you would more think that it's going to depend on the gas count, but... 
I don't know. Realistically, it's it's 800 minerals, right, for two PCs. If you look at my resources right now, it's uh, not uh, not absolutely fantastic, I have to say. Here, I'll, I'll grab these two. Uh, well, these two groups of units, I should say. And I'm just going to try to roam the map a little bit. You know, Actually, guys, I didn't think about this either. I feel like I did something really cool on accident by making the cyclone. Like, I didn't necessarily do it for a strategic reason. But, well, yeah, I guess denying scouting is strategic. But uh, thinking about it... I feel like if someone sees Cyclones, they would probably never expect that it's still a battle cruiser rush. Once again, it is possible that I missed a pro player doing this, you know, genius build at some point and Zerg's already know how to counter this, but this this seems like a, a generally smart idea, to be honest. That you can, you know, deny overlords a little bit on the map, you can make your opponent scared for some kind of Cyclone Hellbat timing attack, and then I'm already gonna have two BCs with Yamato. Okay, I mean, this game I kind of did it on accident, but I would love to, you know, evolve this build later on and see how it's going to go. Like, this build could actually end up being pretty freaking genius with the new Cyclone. Uh, I mean, I, I do think the Cyclone hype is fading a little bit. I talked about it before. I don't think the new Cyclone is necessarily that good, but Terrans really have been enjoying doing timings with them. Like, every Terran I play against with my Zerg makes freaking Cyclones. But it is finally fading a little bit. So maybe Zergs are not necessarily going to be as scared for timing attacks anymore. This build probably would have been even more genius like... I don't know, like two weeks ago maybe. That would have been the perfect timing to do it. Now this is mostly just scouting. Let's see. Uh, no gases. A lot of drones. So I don't have to be afraid for roaches. I guess I should probably just go for my five command center setup behind this. Uh, the reason why this battlecruiser is delayed is because I decided to make Yamato first. So, Yamato is going to finish in 20 seconds. I think that's probably fine. Let's see what he's going to have. There's no queens ready. I, I really think there's a decent chance he's just going to be caught completely off guard by this. Because it's so weird to do this after double cyclone. He sent all of his queens over. So, I'm going to be able to kill two queens straight from the get-go. Which is really nice. First boar is going to go down already. Now, it really depends on how much creepy has spread at this point. I'm going to make an engineering base so I can get planetaries. And now, guys, the Yamato is finished. So, I'm going to be able to Yamato the two highest energy queens. And I think our opponent is just dead. Okay, guys. This build... This build you actually do have to copy because this is very, very smart. Look at what our opponent had. A lair, not enough gas to make a spire. I have to imagine that this was a building spire, right? Or at least he was going to try to build it. Let's see. Yeah, he built the spire there. They always cancel when the game finishes. So he was just starting the spire. Third BC is already finishing. I have five command center, engineering bay. Even if he counterattacks me with, let's say, roaches, I can make cycles from the factory that the BC can defend. With the mind game, this build is freaking genius. Like, this really... I think you guys can get a lot of free wins with this. Now, to be honest, I am a YouTuber of all races, so there's probably a lot of Zerg players watching this like, <laughs> time to bust out my two-base Corruptor Rush and beat all these bad cruiser clouds. No, but seriously, this build I freaking love. I'm going to be trying this again later. Not quite sure if I'll do it in this episode, but I'll try it again later, maybe in a tournament, because this mind game is freaking awesome. Let's go to game number three. Game number three is against another Zerg. All right, well, it's very Zergy today. So we're going to be playing on Radishead Station. This map is probably the perfect battlecruiser map, by the way, because it's very campy. I've showed you this before, but this map has this kind of weird back third base where you can you can mine this out very easily, and then you just have a free third. And battlecruisers obviously don't care about terrain. Well, some maps have weird air blockers, but I don't think... Do any maps in this map will have them? I don't think so, actually. I feel like that's kind of a thing of the past. Now, I don't want to go for the double Bannercruiser rush again. I would like to, you know, get the variety up in an episode like this. So, I think I'm going to go for that build that I mentioned, I think, during the first game. Where I go for a proxy starper, do a Hellion drop. Hellion drop probably is strong on this map as well. Because I would expect a Zerg player to play greedy on this map. Probably even taking a third base without a gas. It's very unusual for a Zerg to do that. Usually they take it with like... They'll probably have like around 80 gas to take the third base. They're usually mining it with like two drones and then taking the fourth speed, a Zergling speed that is, after taking the third base kind of thing. So... But on this map, since the base is so safe, you can just put like a couple queens at the front here. You're not going to die to anything. But then if I get in with a Hellion drop and there's no Zergling speed to drop the Hellions, I think there's definitely some potential here, guys. Maybe I'll even... Yeah, you know what? I'm even going to do the extreme version of this build, which means I'm not going to make a Reaper. I'll make an even faster factory than normal. Like a really, really fast factory. I... Yeah, I think I'll use another SCV for it, right? I, I do kind of want to scout or at least 
pretend to scout. I, I talk about this a lot, but pretending to play normal when you're playing like me is definitely, you know, a good thing to do. You don't want to, you know, give away that you're going to play like me because then they're going to do all these kinds of counters that you don't want to deal with. Now, do I cut gas with this? Ver I think I have to cut gas for a little bit. This might get a little more complicated here if you want to copy this. You can, you can skip the gas cut, to be honest. Like, it's probably fine. Uh, but I want to get my command center up a little later. I'll delay the starport for a little bit, but uh, I think that's just worth it, to be honest. Here we go. going to bring the command center down. Then I, I don't think I need to make the depot there. I'll just make the depot in my actual wall instead. There we go. Looks like we're playing against a hatch first over here. Would be pretty surprising to see anything besides a hatch first, to be honest. Then I'm going to resaturate the gas a little early. Um, and the reason I'm doing that is just because I want to go for a proxy star put in a battle cruiser, right? You can do this build without, uh, you know, taking that gas early, but I, I definitely want it. Now, the, the wall here is kind of... Yeah, this is a wall, but it looks weird. I don't like the way that wall looks at all, guys. That wall looks freaking weird. Like, how is this... I guess they can even, like, run bailings into this little gap over here and kill the reactor, which would be <laughs> very unfortunate, I guess. Wait, the Overlord didn't stay here, right? No, okay. I was going to say, I, I can't let it live if it's just chilling there. Okay, so the proxy starport is on the way. I'm going to go for another gas instantly. I do think it's a good idea to send the Hellions across um, so I can see if there's roaches coming. Because keep in mind, even if this is a big macro map, even if it has a back third base, it's still... You know, I guess he could just mind game me. Like, I didn't see the base. Like, he could just be going for, like, a big roach all in. So, I definitely want to get some scouting on that. Uh, let's see. He's just coming Kree at the front. He is spreading creep. That's usually a good sign that is going to be a little more normal. I know it's not a huge sign, but it is a little bit of a sign. Going to make the fusion core over there. Now, there is one big advantage to proxying battlecruisers. It's... I know it always sounds a bit counterintuitive, so I'm going to explain it to you guys. But... Battlecruisers can teleport across, right? So why would you proxy it? But the thing is, if you have the teleport available when you're in the opponent's base, you can teleport out at any time, which means that you can stay for really, really long. Let's say you teleport a battlecruiser in, there's a lot, enough queens and a spore. You might have start flying away even when your battlecruiser is just orange health or maybe even yellow health because else is going to die. You can't teleport out. If you make it from the proxy, you can stay until your battlecruiser is freaking 1 HP. Oh, I do need to make sure I pick this up in time. Where are you going? Okay, there you go. Uh, make a tech lab on there as well. Now, do I want to... I guess I'll rally some Hellions there so I don't lose the starport to anything. Oh, good positioning on the Queens by him, I have to admit. That's definitely well done. Now, I'm still going to unload her because I am going to be able to get some quote-unquote free damage. Oh, looks like I'm going to lose one Hellion. Which is a little unfortunate. I do have to uh, shout out his uh, micro, by the way. The way he micro those links was definitely quite good. So he has a lot of creep. I don't have enough gas to make. I guess I'll just go for the... Does that fit? Yeah, I think it's barely going to work out. Yeah, I'll go for the command center and then I can start the battle cruiser on time. Uh, keep, keep in mind, this is not, you know, the kind of game where we are going to be able to kill him with one BC. I mean, maybe we could, but that would be very surprising and that would be after a series of huge mistakes from the opponent, which I don't really want to rely on, right? So the first portion of this aggression definitely didn't do the trick. I feel like it is not unlikely that people have been doing these Hellion drops on this map more often. I do remember Clem, uh, possibly the best Terran in the world right now, doing this against... I want to say against Raynor, right? One of the best Zergs in the world in the last European regional tournament. So maybe Terrans have been copying it. And even though the follow-up and the idea of the strategy is completely different, it... It doesn't matter, right? The only thing that matters is that his units are in position to beat my unit. So it's not always rocket science. Now, I do think I can probably deny Zerglings from leaving his base like ever by just staying in front with Hellions. I mean, this BC is going to do pretty great, I think. It's at least going to bait the Queens. I feel like that's like the minimum case scenario or like the worst case scenario, I should say, where I'm going to bait the Queens away. I'm going to kill the one with the transfuses, which is really nice. If he targets the medevac, I think it would be kind of nice for me, actually, because I am not really planning to use the medevac again. Oh, those are some really good hits on the Zerg. He's going to lose so many links, guys. That, if, if he loses all of those links, I can just run by with the Hellions as well. So here we go. The Battlecruiser is in. At, at this point, this might be more of a distraction. It kind of looks like he wants to go up to Mutalisks or so, and I just say that by the amount of gases that I see. Yeah, the sad part for me is, is that... Um, this base doesn't have drones because the three bases are all somewhere else. I think I'm just going to die for this queen. This queen is annoying me. Exactly. There we go. Okay. Maybe I can drive by now. How many? There is two queens. Uh, 
Do I want to make something happen against two queens? I don't know. Let me drive by and kill a couple zerklings. I probably should go back and repair these as well. I'm just a little scared here of the follow-up because he was very greedy. I didn't have my camera hotkeys there. That's why the macro was a little scuffed. Um, he was very greedy and now he has six gases. I really think he's going to be able to make like five million mutalisks and I do not want to deal with five million mutalisks. Yamato is about to finish, so that's going to be nice. I guess I'll go for an engineering bay just in case I have to for the defense. Second battlecruiser is going to help me put on some pressure unless the freaking spire units, whatever they are, are going to be out already. Now, I've had a couple games with BCs against Zerg where I'm just waiting for, like, corruptors to show up and then all of a sudden it's Hydras and I'm so freaking happy because Hydras are just not that great against BCs, but a lot of people still like to make them. Uh, let's see. You not gonna save that he's also not really gonna be saving these queens very well i guess i'll do a double yamato just to make sure they fall yeah i, I really i really think the spire units are like about to be here i don't know where they are maybe they're maybe they're in the eggs they could literally be in these two eggs right now i don't even know okay i'm gonna go for cyclone speed this game i do think going for cyclones could be a decent idea see i'm just trying to target this as hard as i can can i kill it i'm paying attention to this ready speed pc let's get that one out there oh i didn't actually get it out there no way is the hatchery gonna fall did he so close try to get it out at the right time oh it's still at 93 health okay so i mean we did as much damage as possible without losing the bcs like quite literally if if i told you guys that couldn't have been any better i'm sure you guys would believe me because that was that was kind of crazy what I did there. Staying until like the last... Oh, please repair those, you silly geese. Uh, staying on until the last possible second. And now what my plan is for the rest of this game is... I think I just want to control the map with the aggressive units that I have. Make cyclones initially. And then at some point, I would like to go into ghosts. I feel like going into ghosts would be quite nice. Oh, that's another overlord kill for me. How many units are here? There's, I don't think that was... There's no way that was enough zerglings, what I just saw there. There's absolutely no way. Our opponent has been freaking greedy, by the way. Like, oh my goodness. He has just been... He was on like 90 drones there. Okay, I think I'm just going to do it, guys. This is a little little crazy by me. But those bailings are about to finish. Oh, there's going to be some huge hits on the drones. Look at those drones, guys. So many drones are falling. I can even dodge the bailings for the most part there we go yeah, I, I can't believe how many drones i'm gonna kill with this run by he was so greedy he knew that i had five million hellions and he made 80 drones off of i want to say like 10 zerglings it was look how many drones i think i killed like at least 30 with that to be honest i feel like at least 30 died that is not the right base now i do have to admit my unit count and my supply count is very low like this is not this is not a good macro situation for me. Okay, well, this is quite nice. Oh, he's not paying attention. He's going to lose all of these. Why are you going for that? You're absolutely nuts. Please don't dive it. Okay, there we go. I, I just killed half of his corruptors. First, I locked on with the Cyclones. The Cyclones don't do damage damage anymore, by the way. So he could have just, you know, flown away most likely. Uh, but then he kind of turned onto the BCs. And now he lost five corruptors. And keep in mind with how many drones he lost, that's not going to be the easiest thing to replenish ever. Let's see, what am I going to use the Cyclones for? I do have the speed, right? I always... I'm so used to them being fast, so when they are this fast, it, it looks normal to me. But yeah, these do have speed. Now, how many Cyclones do I really want to end up building? I think it might be time for me to go for Ghost already. I've always loved the idea of having like this this perfect Terran late game where you just have like battle cruisers flying around, getting free trades with Yamato, having like some mech units to make everything a little more efficient on the defense. And then eventually you go into Ghost. Oh, he is making roaches, so that's something we'll have to keep in mind. Uh, can I... Do they... Do, mutalisks? Why are we making mutas now after you lost all your corruptors? That is also a little crazy. Let's see, I'm going to Yamato all of the investors. I think I did get all of them. Yeah, we did get all of them. So I'm going to be losing one of these. Um, but in the end, really not that bad of a trade. Oh, that's a really good run by him. I, I do have to say... Even though my opponent made a, uh, a little bit of an oopsie, I guess, with the uh, Corruptors earlier on. Overall, I think his play has really been good. Like, he had he had two moments, right? He had the Corruptor where I couldn't even really tell if it was a misclick or, like, something that he intended to do. That didn't really work out where he lost five Corruptors. Then he was a little too greedy. But besides that, his moves have been, have been quite good. Like, the Spire was in time. The Hellion drop defense was good. Even here, going for Investors right away. I, I am impressed. Like, he's definitely bringing the best fight of everyone to us so far. Now, I think I'm going to go for a double engineering bay to complement my battle cruisers. I think at some point, I might have to add more starports for more BCs. Uh, because I I would say I'm definitely going to lose them over time. Like, since the FS is already out, since we're playing against a player who uh, clearly knows his way in the late game, I, 
Yeah, I don't think we can keep these BCs alive forever. That was a kill, by the way. He didn't even uh, cancel that. Now, our army composition is starting to be very freaking cool, isn't it? Battlecruiser, Cyclone, into the Ghost. I'm a huge fan of what we have right now. Let's see, what are the upgrades on those? Plus one on both of those. Okay, so his upgrades are not that great. That is nice to see. I guess I could also make some... Wait, I should probably go for triple upgrades. Why the hell not, guys? Triple armory. I know it sounds crazy, but why the hell not? Okay, I need to make turrets everywhere, mostly in the case of burrowed investors. Um, I don't need a planetary there. I guess I'll make that into another orbital. One thing that's easy to forget is that orbitals are very good, you know? Like, making more orbitals is freaking great. Let's see, exactly. There are the investors. I was waiting for them. Okay, I mean, I can just go ahead and kill them. He has a lot of bailings, but it's not necessarily going to be the most efficient thing ever against what I have. I think I will pre-split uh, a bunch of these units. That planetary is not going to be ready in time, unfortunately. Oh, I can't re really get in range to snipe uh, a lot of those units. Okay, he's going to die for these. I think that's great because it's only a couple. The value is not going to be absolutely amazing here yet. Let's see. I need to be really careful for those investors, guys. Those investors are going to pop off. I did get a couple of Yamatos off. The bailings are kind of gone. The parasitic bomb is onto the... Yo, this is actually really nice. That planetary is keeping track of all the roaches over here. Can I save these BCs? Probably not. The planetary is going to fall, but... Was that a bad trade? I want to say definitely not. Oh, I could have saved that ghost if I was paying a little more attention. Let's see. These have speed. Oh, no. He's going to fight the fusion core. Okay, that kind of sucks for me. He's going to fight the freaking fusion core because I, I send him there. Uh, but we are going to be able to kill the corruptors for it. I do think now I'm going to make the extra start. This is such a freaking technical playstyle that, ha that I have right now. I have three factories, three barracks, and I'm gonna have three starpers. Like, this is the opposite of what a normal production cycle looks like. If you guys are not sure what it looks like, typically, you will choose to play bio or mech, and then you'll have, like, Let's say you're playing bio, right? You'll usually make eight barracks and then you'll have a factory and a starport. There may be two factories and a starport, kind of like that. Now, once again, really good place, but like, I'm actually a fan. But this guy is turning me into a, into a fan with his play right now. Like, even these burrow fungals, super, super cool. I do need to repair these, by the way. I'm being a little too crazy by being out here with these. Now, let's see if he can handle my final form here, guys. It is time for some freaking nukes. Triple... Oh, my God. I, my setup is so freaking cool, isn't it, though, guys? I, I actually have triple everything. It's not even just a production. I even have a triple armory. Like, every, did he just... Dort no, this guy is way too cool for us, guys. He just dodged my Yamato with a burrow. Like, who even does that? Yo, this guy is freaking cool, man. Free, man. He's, he needs to be making YouTube content, not me. What the hell? Those are some freaking awesome plays. Let's see. How many SCVs do I have? I have 87 SCVs, which is quite good. Um, triple nuke is going to be nice. Uh, let's see. I know he has investors, but I, I guess actually this could be a, a little bit of an advantage for us. Kind of weird to call it an advantage, but he is probably using his investors for map vision right which means that he might not pay attention to anything being out on the map like i i think there's a good chance that he doesn't have like spore does he have this base actually i, I want to nuke this if he has it doesn't look like he has it he has ultralist now as well okay i'm just gonna try to nuke all of them one by one um i guess this is gonna come a little later does he see that ghost i feel like he probably sees that here, I'll just nuke this instead. There we go. If my ghost is going to get stuck on these, then I'll just drop a random nuke. Okay, did he see the first one? Ah, uh, yeah, he did see that one. He's going to lose a decent amount of uh, production. Or not production, but spores to that. Let's see. This one is not going to pop off. This one? Hey, he got, actually got five kills somehow. I don't know how it did that, but it did get five kills. So that's, that's quite nice for us. Now, let's see. What do I need? I think I need a lot more... Just static defenses on the map. Dude, he has a unit burrowed there as well. Yeah, that's the thing, guys. I, I don't have the army to go out with and grab bases like that. I was kind of just hoping that, you know, he wouldn't look there and I would be able to put on a planetary. But oh, can I maybe save this? This, look, there's no creep here, right? Guy, you can see you can see there's no creep. <laughs> no, obviously he's probably gonna see that, but oh no, he didn't see it. Like, it would be really funny if I could just hide it in that nook all the time. Now I'm just gonna make mass command center. So first of all, I can make more planetaries, but I can also replace my mining planetaries if they die. I'm gonna send one of these down here. I do have another nuke. I do I feel like there is most likely uh, an attack coming somewhat soon. I guess I'll just uh, snipe this one for now. Let's see. Is he going to try to fungal me? Or can he run away with an investor, actually? Oh, he can't. Let's go. Get fricked. 
All right. I feel like it's time for a random nuke in downtown. There you go. That's going to be really nice. And these are going to be able to deny bases. Does he see it? I mean, it's such a random place to, place to nuke almost. Okay, there we go. Going to put one down there as well. And these BGs are going to be doing an awesome job. It's not really going to kill. Oh, man. That actually ended up being kind of close somehow. Like, I feel like that nuke could have hit. I wouldn't even be surprised if that nuke popped off still. Hey, look, guys. We expanded over to our freaking fusion core. How cool is that? Now, I need to scan around nonstop just to try and find the investors more than anything else okay well if it's just going to be corruptors then i guess i'll just go for some yamatos and trade oh, this is pretty nice i don't i need to do nah, i think i'll just teleport out of here because just attacking corruptors straight up is not going to give me that much value but if he gets like one freaking fungal or something then all of a sudden that is a lot of value right and i don't really want to be in that situation um it's just not worth it i guess like too much risk what do you call it the risk reward ratio is that what it's called something like that yeah, I don't have enough money for upgrades. I mean, it makes sense because I have double, double, ar triple armory, triple ghost academy, double eBay, triple star, triple factory. I think it makes sense that I don't have that much gas to spend. In fact, if you're crazy enough, you could even say that my strategy of making everything is slightly suboptimal. But only if you're crazy enough. If you're not that crazy, you probably wouldn't say something like that. Now, I, I have a lot of freaking ghosts. Oh, that's a good double fungal, I have to say. Okay, let's see. Oh, these elders are going to pop. Look at that. Oh, these elders are taking so much freaking damage, guys. He's going to try to blow it up with a bailing. I don't think it's going to work, actually, guys. Oh, the ultra, the ultra dies. No, the planetary stays alive. That is freaking brutal. You know what? I think I'm going to make a raven here because his Bruin Investor usage has been a bit too good. <laughs> like it sounds it sounds pretty simple right what is i think if his bird investors weren't that good maybe i wouldn't necessarily need a raven i don't really like making a raven here mostly for the reason that it's just gonna make the armor control a lot more complicated to have like another spellcaster in there but it's just gonna make a lot of sense now my ideal late game that i always envisioned that i was talking about before it usually had about eight battle cruisers so i'm gonna spend the rest of my supply on battle cruisers i'm gonna be defending with these ghosts and then i'm very curious to see if we can make that work i mean it's gonna be hard against someone who has been so good with the burrowed investors but who knows um i'm just gonna i, I kind of want that to be just chilling there for a while let's see what's my opponent gonna do i do need to make sure i get this middle base at some point let's see let's max out on the i want to make more nukes but let's make sure I can actually afford the upgrades first. So there we go. Triple nuke on the way. All these armories are producing. That's pretty fantastic. I have enough turrets here to not die to corruptors. That's nice. Probably need a couple more over here as well. It is a very significant amount of corruptors, I have to say. I was kind of hoping that he wouldn't have that many because I lost my BCs over time. But I guess it does make sense that he still has a decent amount. Now, I, I think if you're like perfect at the multitasking with this, which... I really doubt anyone is, to be honest. But if you were perfect with this, it'd be so sick to have, like... You know, you're expanding at the same time, and you're dropping nukes at the same time, and you're flying around with battle crews at the same time. Like, I feel like that would be freaking cool if you could pull that off. Now, at this point, he probably... Oh, he still doesn't have that base. That's pretty crazy, I think, isn't it? Now, I click the Raven on my battle cruiser, so there's going to be able to do... Um, so, it's just going to scout the investors without me having to pay too much attention to it, basically. I need to be very... I'm so scared of the investors, though. Like, it's really scary to play battle cruisers against Zerg, you know, because of the freaking investors. Oh, oh, I did the reveal that ghost on accident. I guess I'll just go for some nukes like this. Nuke this one down bottom as well. Uh, wait, he doesn't have it mined out yet, so maybe I can do some damage for now. Let's see. Where are the investors? The investors aren't here yet, guys. He's going a little early, I have to say. I have an anti-armor missile as well. The anti-armor missile is going to do so much freaking work here, though. And my, my upgrades aren't even that fantastic, but the ant armist is really going to make this uh, work quite well. Let's see. This one. Yeah, these bad. Exactly what I was talking about, guys. The multitasking here was finally a little too much for the opponent. Like those nukes combined, I think got 32 kills. He lost a bunch of corruptors. And finally, we made a freaking dent in this guy's defense. Like that is great to see. And I guess I'll just be remaking those. Maybe this is a good moment for me to try and take that gold base finally. Let's spam this around with turrets a little bit. I don't see the investor. Wait, where are the investors at? Did he make... I, I wonder if it's possible he he burrowed all his investors somewhere else. Oh, he is... Wait. I'm not quite sure. Oh, the watchtower probably... See, yeah, the watchtower must be in range. Yeah. For some reason, I, in my head, the watchtower wasn't in range, but I was thinking about this base. I remember checking it before. Okay, let's teleport over here. I... I tried to teleport those back home. Did I fail? No, I didn't fail. I do have a couple of lives still. Good. Man, I swear, I just love everything. I'm sorry, guys, for all the praise, but I love everything I'm seeing from this guy. Like, even just paying attention enough to transfuse that spore quickly. Like, even moves like that are freaking cool, I have to say. Now, what I'm going to do... 
is make a little bit of a deeper layer of turrets here. Man, this is going to end up being the freaking goat game of the channel. I'm, I'm still freaking terrified of, uh, you know, one fungal killing like my ghost or anything. I should probably pull these ghosts a little bit further back. Let's do a scan to make sure. I think a nuke in the middle could be quite nice. Let's see. I'm going to click those around the watchtower. Uh, oh, I guess I... Wait. I found the investor, but I didn't somehow. That was kind of weird. Wait. Could I... Wait, this could be genius. I could do a double nuke on the same location. So maybe he thinks he's going to find the nuke. Wait, I'm going to wait with this one. Uh, wait. <gasps> no, but 44 kills. Guys, it worked. I missed it, though. Oh, we're going to have to watch that one on the replay. Now I got 44 kills, guys. I didn't even... I forgot that nuke existed, to be honest, because it was like... You know, I kind of imagined that he would have seen it. Okay, so he sees this nuke. He is not... Wait, he's not pulling away the drones. He's not pulling away... Oh, did he pull them away? Oh, he pulled them away just in time. I like how he canceled those gases just to lose the drones anyway. That looks kind of funny. But let's see. I'm still scared of, like, a bunch of investors. I mean, the nukes have probably been the best thing about this game, to be honest. I'm almost completely maxed on upgrades now. I have plus three armor coming on the way for the ghost. I, I don't think I have enough planetaries here, actually. I know that sounds really absurd, but I, I actually mean it. I'm not, I'm not kidding, guys. Because if he gets on top of the ghost with those bailings, we are going to cry. Yeah, you know what? I'm going to fall back with most of these ghosts for a little bit. Maybe I should do another just random nuke in downtown because they, they have been working so well. Here, we'll just pop down right here because why not? There we go. Let me re-hotkey these ghost academies. I do think three ghost academies is a decent count. I don't think I want to go too crazy on making more of these. Um, is it going to hit again? Probably not, right? Like, there's no way that it hits twice in a row, I think. No, exactly. I, I'm kind of surprised he did. That's the one thing he's been missing is the kind of, like, advancing with spore crawlers. Like, I feel like spore crawlers in the middle of nowhere would have been really good at deterring most of these things. Let's get this over here. Make a couple more command centers around it as well. Is what... Is this one going to hit? That one hits. And this one? I, I saw a roach. No, the roach move. How many kills does this have? 21 kills again. Dude, I think at some point, this point might come very soon. I think he's going to be absolutely sick of me uh, dropping nukes on him. And and he's going to go for it. Oh, I need to be so careful. That was a missed EMP. I kind of panicked a little bit there. I just wanted to make sure to not die instantly. Uh, yeah, I think I'll just fall back with these, to be honest. Like, I'm going to make a planetary over here. Let's see. Can't quite get the EMP off there, unfortunately. Like, I will, like those, those amount of bailings will... That's why I panic so hard. Like, those amount of bailings will annihilate, uh, you know, my freaking ghost count. So, definitely don't want that to happen. I mean, if it's going to let me snipe those, I mean, I'll take it. Can I get another one? Probably not. The command center... Oh, that's alive. I kind of imagined that it would be dead, but I guess it is alive. He's going to try to go for it again, looks like. Um, you know, there's not that many investors and stuff. I think. Wait, it, oh, guys, I, th I think we're going to get the best bait ever. No, he's going to try to... Yeah, I saw it. He was trying to get the ghost, but now I'm going to get so many freaking snipes on the corruptors. I do have to run away for the ghost, but the overseers are going to die, guys. He's trying to chase the ghost, but I will be able to split these. The battle cruisers are going to reign supreme, and so are the freaking ghosts. And there we go. Ooh, what a freaking game that was. Units lost... Almost 20k in our advantage, 30k against 50. And I, I I have to be honest, guys, most of the time, especially when I played like Ghost or Good Master, not Cloaked or Good Master, the nukes were freaking great. But at the same time, they also felt like a little wasteful in a way. But this game, I really feel like the nukes carried, didn't they? Like the nukes did an amazing job here. And I'm just going to go back in the replay because they had, we had the one nuke. I'm not going to try looking for it for too long. So if we miss it, then that's going to be it. But the nukes really carried it. Look at the supply at this point in the game, guys. It's... Well, almost maxed against 2k, but he is 3k, 3k in the bank. You can tell he did a really good job with the late game. He did slack a bit on rebuilding the investors. That's definitely something I saw. So here we go. The ghosts are going to come. Oh, it was this one, right? Like, what, what did this hit? I don't even know. Did he just move down? Oh, no, he moved down just a little bit there. Five kills and then 44. 39 units killed, of which most were bailings and a couple ravages, I think. That's a beautiful game. I have no idea how long we're in the video. I want to guess it's about 45 minutes, so we still have some games to play. Or, well, at least one of it is this long. Let's do it. All right, game number four is against another Zerg. Oh, my goodness, guy. I'm telling you. What is it? Now? Well, it's almost noon, I guess. 11 a.m., guys. 11 a.m. European time. Zerg Paradise, I promise. That's... Well, uh, to be fair, I did get one Terran player who left the game instantly. Uh, it's actually pretty funny, because the way I was introducing him... I just I just ran up the stairs. I'm a little gassed, actually. The way I was introducing him was... Um, 
this guy wait that's a good looking phone this guy has featured multiple times in the can i beat grandmaster with a single protos unit video and then he left instantly i it was his name was big farmer i think we beat him this is one of the best games ever on the channel by the way is the sentry only game i'm yeah i'm pretty sure he's the guy we beat with sentries only and then we also beat him with Disruptors only, I believe. Yeah, but the Sentries only game, guys, freaking beautiful. Like, actually freaking beautiful. Now, what am I going to do against this guy? It, it's a little bit of a shame that we get so many Zerg players because it is uncommon. And I didn't really prepare four different builds or, well, mentally prepare four different builds, I suppose. So, uh, what am I going to do now? Like, I used my two main ideas. Um, I mean, the last game was such a big banger that I guess the build wasn't particularly relevant anymore at some point like it really just ended up becoming like a really cool ghost battlecruiser game with mass nukes and stuff right but um yeah i mean i did open with the heli and drop into the battlecruisers realistically didn't look that strong oh i do have another idea actually yeah okay, okay i do have a cool idea there was a build at some point which wasn't very popular but whenever i saw it it looked pretty good and it was pretty much opening battlecruiser into doing a two base on Lin with Marines. Because typically if you see Battlecruiser, you're gonna associate with mech, right? Like I I mean I literally played mech every game so far. I mean some games I didn't really get past the point of making Battlecruiser, I believe. Yeah, the second one I just wanted two Battlecruiser, so I didn't really get past that point. But you guys know what I mean. I was gonna play mech in all the games. So people are more tempted. Oh, this is actually a really good map for Zerg, by the way. They are more tempted to go for stuff like roaches that are maybe not as good against marines, for example. So maybe this build could work. That's what I'm going to try. I'm going to go for a fast battle cruiser, and then I will... Well, I could make a fake third, maybe. Kind of depends on how good my opponent is going to scout. But anyway, the main plan is to make five barracks and all in with marine tank off of either one or two battle cruisers. I'm not quite sure. Whether I can fit in a fake third command center there, I, I guess we'll just have to see. I mean, trust me, guys, this is not a build that I regularly vibe out with on the ladder. So I guess really... Oh, no, this Reaper's... Oh, that sucks. Really good micro hit, by the way. Putting the queen there is fantastic positioning. Uh, mostly because it can go... I'm not going to... I'm going to put the starboard up here. Mostly because it can go either here or here. So shout out to the opponent. Definitely well done there. Um, how many Hellions? I don't think I want to make too many Hellions, right? Like, I kind of want to cut it out a little early. You know, I'm kind of struggling with the idea of the gas count because I... For Battlecruisers, normally you go for a fast third gas, but... I mean, if I make a third gas now, am I really going to be able to afford all these barracks and stuff? I don't really think so, to be honest. Hmm, I guess we're just going to have to see. Okay, so I'm going to make four Hellions instead of the usual six slash eight. I have one marine doing my, uh, yeah, I mean, waiting for Overlord's task. It's not the most interesting task most of the games, but someone has got to do it. Sorry, Mr. Marine. And then I'll just make a deeper over here for vision. Let's see if I can find an Overlord. I just want to make sure that the opponent doesn't get this base too easily. Didn't take it as his third base, looks like. That is uh, kind of surprising, I have to say. Uh, like this, I mean, I guess, against Terran, I guess it kind of makes sense because Terran is pretty good at harassing behind mineral lines for the most part, but... I still would have expected him to take that anyway, because it's just, it's such a freaking good base, right? Like six gold minerals, one gold gas. Like it's absolutely fantastic. Do I have enough depots? I think I might need one more. Yeah, I'll just build one more anyway. Don't really like, you know, having to cut my SCVs for too long. I think I made the third gas at a decent time. Yeah, you know what? I, I kind of do feel like this build is coming together a little bit. Like it's 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 looking pretty decent here, to be honest. It's going to be five second delay on that battle cruiser. Really not the biggest deal. I don't have stim yet. That is a slight downside. Uh, I I do think I have to make stim before making the... Um, what's it called? Making like the, the rest of the production, I suppose. So the rest of these barracks is. Mostly because if I don't make stim first, that means I'll also never get combat shield. Because I'm only going to have one tech lab. With these kind of builds, you don't usually want to go for multiple tech labs because then you have less marines and your push sucks right if you guys are wondering why don't i just make two tech labs well that's why now the build is i mean i just hope this is gonna work perfectly because the idea is very cool right oh i'm even gonna be able to use this tech lab for the factory oh that is awesome my medivacs are definitely gonna be a little late but eh, it's fine i guess probably go for plus one attack hit when it's combat shield time yeah this build could be awesome because this is like 
a little opposite of how I've used the battle cruisers in the previous games where I, you know, I really relied on them to do all the damage. But in this game, it's mostly going to be a fake out. Like my opponent's going to be expecting mech. And then all of a sudden I'm going to show up with like a big bio all in. Maybe I can deny that. I have to imagine the queens are probably mostly in the main base. Yeah, I'm going to be able to deny this gold. Okay, that is nice. That's going to buy me a little bit of time, I guess, for my push. That's going to make my push a little stronger. Uh, let's see. Yeah, I'll just target it down. There could be links coming from anywhere right now. I don't see the links yet, surprisingly. Oh, he didn't cancel it. That was not a cancel on that uh, freaking command center there. I like how he has bay links, but I don't even have hellbats or anything. Oh, I'm okay. I thought it was going to keep like four alive. In the end, it is going to be two. Still pretty decent, though. So I need to make sure to start my combat shield in time. There you go. It is really interesting to see that my opponent hasn't even really scouted yet to confirm like the follow up. But okay, he is going to see it. Now, maybe I spoke too soon. He is probably going to see it now. Did I? Uh, okay, here we go. I'm going to put these units in front. Maybe the Hellions can scare him off. That's the, that's the one hope I have. I don't think so. I kind of doubt he's paying attention here, to be honest. I'm running around this Hellion so he doesn't see all of the Marines. Okay, now he's going to see it. Okay, so the plans have been spoiled. I have to admit... Okay, he's making... Why is he making the... Huh? That's the opposite of what I... Okay, well... Okay, listen to this, guys. I'm pretending to play mech. My opponent makes bailings. Then he sees it's bio, and then he makes a roach ward. That's literally the opposite of what I was trying to accomplish. I wanted him to make roaches first to play mech. And then he sees his bio and he doesn't have the bailing nest, but he's... Well, yeah, I guess he's kind of flipping the script on me a little bit. You know what? I'm going to go for the freaking SCP pool here, guys. Here we go. Combat shield is going to finish in 20 seconds, which is going to be nice. I mean, this timing does look very strong, I have to admit. It really does look very strong. The SCVs are not going to be as good because there are, is already a bailing nest on the field, unfortunately. I guess I'm going to boost those medevacs over ASAP. I, I think I just have to get in there. Like, normally this is not the right way to go about it, to really just, like, stim on top of creep and, and all that, right? Let's see. Now the SCVs are coming as well. I think I'm going to send the, the Battlecruiser in there. Okay, there's a little bit of a misclick on the Queens. These tanks are in a really good position here. Let's see how the bailings are going to do. The SCVs kind of baited them, which is really funny. Yo, I can repair this Battlecruiser too with all these SCVs. Here we go. I don't think he's going to have bailing speed. How many drones did he have, guys? 64 drones. How many did I kill? Three. Yeah, so he had 67 drones. I was on a two base all in. Look at everything that he was building, guys. Plus one attack, plus one armor, plus one, uh, what's it called? Air attack and bailing speed. And he had the roach bar. And if I look at his, uh, his uh, well, I could actually maybe better go like a minute back or so. If, if you look at his vision here, he doesn't really know. Well, he, he did scout the gold base. I think he didn't realize that I don't have this third base as of this moment. Because else, he wouldn't really be being this greedy. Like, he made everything at once. He still made more drones as well. He did slip up on the macro a little bit, to, 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 uh, to be honest here. But I still think this strategy looked very strong. Like, I think... Well, on a, on a better map, to be fair, if you're going to copy this, please don't do it on this. Just veto this map, actually. Screw this map. If you're a Terran player, just, just take it out, okay? I don't want to see you guys play on this map. It's going to hurt my soul to see you lose with cool strategies just because you're playing on freaking Equilibrium, I think this map is called. But all right, guys, I am tired. I don't think we have the full hour. I think it's about 55 minutes or so, but I think that's going to be it for today because I am pretty exhausted especially the last game like i was i was really freaking tired and exhausted after the last game so that's gonna be it hope you guys had a fantastic time make sure to suggest new units for me to do in the comments if you had a good time like the video subscribe to the channel and i'll see y'all for the next one adios